Okay, in this video, we are going to revisit the DigiPot, the Digitally Controlled Potentiometer, which is a potentiometer on a chip. And the chip we're going to look at is the X9C103, which is a 10K ohm pot. Now, the wiper position of this DigiPot is controlled by a microcontroller using a three wire interface. We can look at the pinout of the DigiPot. It's an eight pin dip and it runs on five volts. Now, the internal schematic of the DigiPot has 99 resistors, all in series, and there's 100 taps. There's a tap for each resistor. Now we have a resistor high tap, a resistor low tap, and a wiper tap. So by microcontroller control, we can move the wiper up one tap at a time, up or down, on the series string of resistors to get an output resistance of 0 to 10 k ohms. Now the wiper current is limited to only a few milliamps, so we could only use this digipot for small signal applications like say an audio volume control or we could use it for a voltage divider feeding a high input impedance device like an op amp or a variable frequency drive so we're kind of limited to the application so in this in this video we're going to look how we could build a buffer to increase the drive of the digipot so we could drive bigger loads using the X9C103 digital potentiometer okay here's the schematic diagram of my buffer circuit to buffer the output of my digipot. If you look at the left you can see my digipot you can see the resistor high terminal, the resistor low terminal and a resistor string and I have 5 volts across the resistor string. Now the wiper of the digipot is connected to pin 3 of this op amp the non-inverting input. Now this op amp is a CA3140 it's a CMOS op amp so it has a very high input impedance so the wiper current will be very small now the output of the op amp pin 6 is feeding my load RL. Now the output current of this op amp, the CE3140, is only about 10 milliamps. So if you need more current, you could use a high current power op amp like a OPA547 and you could get 300 to 500 milliamps. Now this op amp is configured as a unity gain not inverting amp. So as we vary our digipot from 0 to 5 volts output, we'll get 0 to 5 volts across our load RL. Okay, I've built my buffer circuit on my breadboard and I'm going to use this mechanical 10K pot to simulate my digipot. And this circuitry here is a 5 volt regulator circuit and I'm applying 5 volts across the pot. Now, I've already made a video describing the workings of a digipot and I'll link that video in the description box below. So in this video I'm just going to concentrate on the buffer circuit so we'll use this pot to simulate my, my digipot. So this is my circuitry here. This is my digipot, my op amp, and this, this is my load. LED will be my load. So I have a resistor in series with a LED to simulate my load. So if I turn my digipot from 0 to 5 volts, you can see it's a, being applied to the load. Now I, I can only get about 10 milliamps out of this circuit. So to get more drive, we could go to a better op amp. We could go to a high current power op amp. And they look something like this. This here is, is, a, is a high current op amp, this one right here. You can see it's got a heat sink on it because this is a linear circuit. So we're going to be dissipating some heat. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my op amp to drive a, a MOSFET to get more drive to our load. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my buffer circuit where I'm using a MOSFET transistor being driven by my op amp to get more current drive to my load RL. Now when the digipot is set for 5 volts output that 5 volts will be fed into pin 3 that's a non inverting input of the op amp. Now all op amps always want to make the non inverting input the same as the inverting input so it will drive the MOSFET through pin 6 until pin 2 becomes 5 volts the same as pin 3 and that 5 volts will be dropped across the load. So even if the load resistance decreases, then, then the, the op amp will drive the MOSFET harder to bring the, the voltage back up to 5 volts. So no matter what voltage we have on the digipot, that will be reflected across the load independent of the resistance. Okay, I've added a MOSFET transistor to my buffer circuit so I could drive more current to my load, RL. Now when I adjust my digipot from 0 to 5 volts, I'll get 0 to 5 volts across the load but now I've got to have heavier loads with my MOSFET transistor. Now if we're going to be driving heavy loads, remember this is a, a linear circuit, so you might need a heat sink 
on the MOSFET transistor. Now my rule of thumb is if you have a TO220 package and you're driving more than 300 milliwatts through the, through the TO220 package you should add a heatsink. Now we could add a couple of resistors to the op-amp circuit to give it some gain so as we adjust our digipot from 0 to 5 volts we could actually have 0 to 12 volts applied across our load so we actually could activate 12 volt loads. Okay I've added a couple of resistors to my op-amp circuit to give it some gain so now when I turn my digipot from 0 to 5 volts I'll get 0 to 12 volts out of my MOSFET feeding the load. Now the load in this case will be an automotive bulb, a 12 volt bulb over here. So now when I turn my digipot from 0 to 5 volts, I'll get 0 to 12 volts feeding the load and I can control the brightness of the bulb. Now if I did this continuously I would need a heat sink on my MOSFET transistor because I'm dissipating a lot of heat because we're in linear mode. Now to feed current to the load it's only limited by the heat sink and the power supply. Now to do this another way, a more efficient way, would be use a MOSFET and feed it with a PWM signal. But I just wanted to demonstrate how we could actually do it with a digipot. 